pulverized, and the truth will set you free. Trento Vision is hosted by Tom Trento. Tom can be reached at 561-319-5533 or tom at trentovision.tv. Listen and watch every weekday from 3 to 6 p.m. on AM 1470 WNN and trentovision.tv. Now, let's get a peek at Tom's view of the world. Here's Tom Trento. Or you can just call at 888-565-1470 and get into the discussion on the Constitution of the United States of America. Good or bad? Should we throw it out and start all over? Have a constitutional Constitution for it or again. Yeah, or have a constitutional convention. Just kind of rewrite this this uh, document that's old and tired and all of that. We're talking about... Um, it's a living document. It's a living and breathing <laughs> document. It's organic uh, it changes. We're talking about uh, primarily today uh, here on TrentoVision.tv, the Second Amendment, the one that deals with, well, I'll read it. Um, and we've been putting it into a historical context. Number two says, you got to remember, for those of you just tuning in in our Constitution 101 class here, uh, the First Amendment deals with uh, not making an establishment of religion. You can't have a state church. you got to allow people to exercise their religion freely. You cannot abridge uh, or uh, water down. I think we, we use that water as the down. Trento water vision. Down, right? Can't water down free speech. It's free, and it's speech. Can't water it down. Then it says you can't screw around the press. The press has to be free, you know, um, or the right of uh, people to peaceably assemble, the doctrine of free assembly, and to petition your government with grievances. Number one, and Mark made the point uh, that uh, the writing of this, which was, anybody remember the date? Uh, 1791. December 15th, 1791. 221 years and three days ago, the first ten amendments were written, the Bill of Rights, and the third one was... They were passed. Soldiers, uh, they were ratified, yep. They were, uh, no soldiers allowed in anybody's private property unless they were invited in, because soldiers were doing that. Yep. Mark made the point that the Shays Rebellion, little, it was actually a little tiny thing, um, total of five people killed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but the whole cult, the whole area was up in arms and outrage. It, it was a major up in arms. <laughs> up in arms, literally. It was a major political event uh, in Massachusetts. The causes were economic depression, aggressive tax, and debt collection. Ooh, oh, ooh, yeah. State fiscal policy. The goals were reforming state government or to overthrow it. And uh, the result was the rebellion of Danny, Danny Boy Shays and Job Shattuck were crushed. Problems linked to the Articles of Confederation spurred consideration of a new constitution, which this was. Instead of a new constitution, there were amendments, ten amendments, granting the Bill of Rights, which Robert Yates questioned in his book. Uh, what book was that, Joe? Um, Brutus was the uh, anti um, the anti Bill of Rights piece. So that's what we're talking about today. But before we get into that, Establish we had a little. Who sp- we are? We had a little spillover. Well, hold on. I just want to go a little bit more on the Shays Rebellion. Be- it was really, really driven by the oppressive, overbearing tax that was being put on to the colonies after the Revolutionary, after the Revolutionary, Revolutionary War. War to pay for by the, the war federal debt, government by the federal government to pay for war debts. Right. Where the, I mean, the taxes were just incredible. You know that they were, they were saying they were they were basically so oppressive that people cannot live, and that's the reason they rebelled. So we had the Shays Rebellion. We had the Tea Party, Boston Tea Party. Right. Then we had the American Tea Party. We had the. Yeah. Interesting. Well, who are we? Is that uh, what we're doing? Yes, that? who well, are you we? You tell the folks who we are. Who you tell are them. we? You tell them. You have <laughs> you have a piece of locks hanging down from your lip. Do I really? <laughs> <gasps> You're so rotten. Oh, my gosh. She's like, oh, my God, I'm looking at my camera and I'm camera. <laughs> I during the break, some no- during the break, CJ so inhaled nice. her bagel and no, locks. No, I didn't finish it. That is so cliche. Oh You're eating bagels and locks. That is so cliche. It's, it's very like, healthy. It's like me eating spaghetti and meatballs over here. Okay, you know? all right. I well, tell the I will who bring we are. spaghetti and meatballs to work for you tomorrow. Okay, good. 
And, and, we'll, uh, little, and we'll see spaghetti. how you can restrain yourself on no, the break. Do, and we'll get one, really one long piece of spaghetti and put it between you two. And... <laughs> <laughs> so now you're making me hungry. Thank that... you for uh, tuning into Trento Vision. <laughs> yes, very descriptive. National Security Radio. And food. Uh... On WNN 1470 AM yes, and TrentoVision.tv on that's the us. internet. That is us. That's, that's we. And you can call us at 888-565-1470 if you want to weigh in on the nonsense going on in the studio today. And download your iHeartRadio. App. Or the Ooh. nonsense going Thank on in you. Washington. The, yeah, I heart. Don't forget I heart for sure. Yeah, yeah. Or the nonsense going on in Washington regarding um, everything. The, oh God. But the tragedy in Newtown has, uh, as we suggested and predicted, it doesn't take brilliant people to say somebody's going to exploit this horrible tragedy of 20 kids dying. And uh, they're going to do it and they're going to um, pick their favorite target, pun intended. <laughs> um, guns, uh, and there's there's just a a real aversion and hatred toward that. But we're we're establishing at the outset of our discussion mm. something called <laughs> the Constitution, and um, I'm going to read number two again. It's in the context of the Shays Rebellion, where there was a lot of trouble after the Constitution was was written and ratified, 1787. The Shays Rebellion started a little bit toward the end of that, continued uh, for about a year afterwards. And the upshot was we got to make some changes to the Constitution. The Bill of Rights came. And number two says a well-regulated militia, because everybody reads that now and says, oh, what is a militia? Who needs a militia? Well, in the context in which this was written, yep. a militia was necessary to protect the rights of the people. From the and government. That hasn't changed, as I understand it. Um, and uh, a, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, state militia. And here's where the big argument is on this. Many of the anti-gun or anti-Second Amendment people will say, this is talking about a state militia, not individual personal ownership of guns, comma, the right of the people to keep and bear arms. When you have a dispute like that, where do you go? You go to the to the Supreme Court of the United States, and time after time after time, and two years ago, in a D.C. decision, we'll pull that one up, once again, the rights for individuals to keep and bear arms, the right of people to keep and bear, keep and bear arms. What's the bear arms part? To keep and to bear. What's the bear arms part? Um, you can Hold carry on. them with you? No, that's the keep. To bear, ar bear arms, to use to them, use to them. fight. <laughs> the right to keep and bear arms, to I use your to arms. to keep was to own them and to bear them was to uh, use them. To use, you bear know, arms shall not be. Carry your gun be, around your shoulder and walk outside. and Shall not be infringed. And they don't have any other little qualifications. Even. Yeah. Uh, so that's number two. Uh, but let's uh, go to the phones, take a call, yes. and then we'll um, you want to go back continue. And clean con up on the continue. Uh, well, now we'll introduce it uh, yeah. a little okay. bit. We're gonna we're gonna do the, the Sharia bit on the wood for the instruments. Yeah. Let's go to uh, let's go to Mort on the phone, who is calling to tell me that I have some locks on my chin, or uh, yeah, do you have right. something else on Can your I mind Mortzart? today? Mort, any Mortzart on this? Hi, gang. Hey. Well, hi. This this is more in the uh, in the way of an observation. Uh, apparently, when when you you fellows and girls come back from the or fellows and girl <laughs> come back from from your break, uh, and, and there, is mas there is mastication going on. <laughs> in a, in a, in a, it's a feeding you've frenzy. All become, you've all become Jewish. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, uh, getting over that, I was good. wondering. Uh, uh, during your uh, discussion and reading of the uh, Bill of Rights, which is uh, President Obama's, uh, it, it's the bane of his existence. He hates it. I was wondering what kind of reception I would receive if I were to show up at the north gate of the White House with a sidearm and want to be quartered in the residence <laughs> part of the White House. Uh, <laughs> well, take Peter with you. Take Good Peter Feynman with you if you do yes, that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, 
He goes first. If he gets in, I'll try. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Interesting I, show today, gang. Thank you. I don't think you'd um, you get a warm welcome by any means, but uh, I do see some of your meanderings here um, that we are going to integrate into the show. Mort sent a, an email and uh, said, I've been spinning my top all day uh, to include some thoughts. What about banning the use, all well, this banning now, banning guns, banning yeah. the use of the term over the next 10 years? Uh, banning, um, what about banning liberal lunatics from running for office? Okay, we can vote for that. <laughs> what about banning greedy, self-centered, something for nothings from voting for liberal lunatics? Yes, we talked about that last week. What about immersing Mayor Bloomberg in 16 ounces of an overly sweetened fountain drink? Yes. That would be good. Yes, a salty one. <laughs> what about, these are, these are, we got Mort's art, now we have Mort's words. Mort's words. What about uh, sending Hillary to recuperate from her concussion to the resort town of Benghazi? I like that one. Uh, what about banning guns from President Obama's Secret Service agents? Yes. It's a kinder, gentler Secret Service. Mm -hmm. What about banning guns from the Senate and House Guards? Right. What about banning smoking and doping in the residence quarters of the People's House? <laughs> He's on a roll, man. Yeah. What about banning veterans from VA hospitals? Think of all the tax money it would free up. I think they up. already do that, don't they? He, well, he's saying you could save tax money to, to send to the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. There, oh. you, so, there you go. What about banning microphones and teleprompters within a 25-mile radius of the White House? Mm. <laughs> uh, that would be a problem. Um, I can't read that word there. What about banning Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi? Uh, can't read that. What about banning? What about banning Chuck Hagel and John Kerry uh, from speaking in public or private? That, that's good. Speaking in public or private. No, I think I think the First Amendment may. Uh, no, maybe it doesn't work for them. You know, what about banning Sharia from being discussed in mosques? No, that could be a good one. What about banning doors on mosques? That'd be good. What about banning the Muslim Brotherhood and affiliates from uh, implementing Sharia in America? What about banning all newspapers associated with the Tribune group? No, then we'd have no fun with that, without any of the Tribune newspapers. Um, thank you, Mort's words, uh, once again, for your articulate and uh, invective. I, I, I think I have to give that. I believe I hear my mother calling me. Um, oh, no. What is she calling you? That's <laughs> that the is question. Not, that is not a good thing. But, more, here's the question of the day. Yes. Um, why, this is a psychological question now as we start deconstructing the political situation at hand. Um, what is going through the minds of uh, a congresswoman from New York, um, McCarthy, I think her name is? Yeah, Carolyn McCarthy. Carolyn McCarthy, whose uh, husband was shot 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, Nancy Pelosi, all the usual anti-gun, and, and those of us here in, in this room, we're arguing the Second Amendment, you know, what our positions are on guns or not on guns. I think guns are very dangerous, and, and they're extremely dangerous. They're like automobiles. You know, you, you, the, you need a license with an automobile, all of that. Uh, so I think there needs to be um, some... Uh, stuff involved if someone buys a gun or uses a gun. And we'll, we'll get into some of that. But what, what is going through the minds of the heads of these people uh, when they want to take this uh, sad situation and just exploit it politically? What, what's going on? Well, uh, most of the people you just named uh, had their intellectual curiosity uh, arrested at about age four. And they, have, <clears throat> they don't understand ideas. Uh, they only understand the taxing, spending, and punishment, and uh, name-calling and finger-pointing and a few things like that. Uh, it, it, there hasn't been a new idea uh, since Woodrow Wilson. I think he started the whole thing, and um, it's just been snowballing ever since with the same, 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 same old. They have the same uh, response uh, to, uh, to any stimulation. Well, what... And I'll ask you guys, too, in here, this question. What I don't like the explanation I just gave. That, that didn't seem to satisfy Okay, well, me. stick around a little bit, and you can have another go at it. <laughs> you can have another bite at the, <laughs> another uh, bite at the, at the, at the bagel. At the bagel. Yeah, another bite at the bagel. <laughs> I mean, do, do they really believe, these people, 
that um, I think Connecticut has 22 laws guarding gun ownership and gun use. Is, is their view that another 20 would make the world a safer place? Or do you think they really believe that? Or is it is it a uh, just a uh, a knee jerk reaction to guns? Just the whole thing of like, oh, get that thing away I from think, me. I think in the case of Carolyn McCarthy, I think it really is a reaction to guns, um, on account of her you know personal family tragedy um, on the subway that day. Um, for Nancy Pelosi, I think she's trying to um, legislate behavior. I think that's what it's all about. I think it's about. Um, government control and legislating behavior and um, and in between those two the people who have the knee-jerk reaction to it and say yeah we got to ban this we got to ban that we got to ban bullets we got to ban assault weapons um, really what they want to do is they want to change people's behavior they think that by taking these rights away from law-abiding people that that's going to change somehow um, the outcome of, of people who mean well, to do it, others okay. harm. They don't understand but, that somebody who wants to do you harm is going to find a way, whether it's by a gun or a knife or a bomb or ricin or whatever it is, and that's all there is to it. And you cannot change that. Well, and I think it's it's more like, like Bloomberg was the banning of 32-ounce sodas. That is the, the, the quintessential mindset. Yeah. Is if I ban 32 ounce sodas in restaurants, people won't drink 32 ounce sodas. No, they'll it's just like, buy two 16 <laughs> ounce sodas instead. But but the point being is, it's like we have to control behavior. Yes. You're not responsible enough to. That's right. To do do the right thing. So we we know better than you. That's We're right. We're smarter than you. We have more wisdom, you, and if you put, you give us more money and put us more in control, and more power. We're going to tell you what's the best thing for you is. I agree, Mark. You know what? You know what it is, and and you're reading from this book every day now for the My Sharia. Really, what these leftists want to do is is they want to write their own reliance of the traveler, traveler. for the rest of us. Well, and, the whole and they're point not going to call it Sharia. Um, but it's going to affect every single aspect of our lives, and we're never going to have to think for ourselves. All we have to do is look it up in the book. Oh, mm -hmm. what do I do if this, if that's, that? That's what Sharia is, is yeah. thou shalt not think. Yeah. You just do that. Do, uh, you put us in power. You give us the money. Yeah. We'll tell you what to do and how to think. And, yeah. and in the case of Sharia, it's ordained by God. In the case, in case of uh, the left, it's ordained by government. By government, which is their God. God. And that's yeah. the whole point is and you have to – this yeah. is a – and they, they think, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Yeah. It's it's their rule book. It's their way of yeah. do not think, America. All, you know, Just go watch your TV. Just go watch yeah. – we'll, we'll entertain you. We'll do all that other stuff for you. Yeah. Keep you happy. Keep you passive. Mm -hmm. We'll think for you. Yeah, absolutely. If I may jump in just a second. Please I do. Think, I think there's another aspect to this. I believe that the, the constant uh, palaver coming out of uh, out of the Congress – uh, by uh, the Reeds and the Pelosi's and the uh, Schumer's and people like that, uh, they're just hell-bent on justifying their existence every single day, and uh, their existence, uh, proving their existence is worthwhile, uh, means legislating uh, immediately, uh, regardless of uh, consequences. Uh, the consequences don't matter. Mm. Uh, uh, just uh, pass something, do something, prove that we're here, prove that we're earning our salary, and for God's sake, re-elect us. Well, I disagree with you power. a little bit more, well, a I little bit on this. No, mm -hmm. I do, because first of all, I think these is people are lost? so full lost? of themselves and so entitled and so in belief that they don't have to justify their existence to the rest of us. So I disagree with that part. And then the other part is I really believe that um, that some of them, like Pelosi, like Reed, like, the you know, um, like Obama— um, really, they're looking to exploit a crisis and exploit a tragedy for their own agenda that they've already had. And as soon as that crisis or tragedy happens, they are ready to go with the answer, which is to do something that is against our personal rights. Well, I agree with you, but I object to your right to say it. <laughs> well, that is your right. 
And it, is that is that uh, piece of lock still on your chin there? I don't know. Can you turn your computer on and call me back or text me and let me know? Talk to you guys later. Okay. All right. Okay. Love you, Mort. Take it easy, Mort. Uh, <laughs> guess how many... Our resident editorial cartoonist. Yes. Oh, he's a writer, too. I mean, yeah. he, does, he does amazing stuff. Do you think the... Uh, I'm using... Um, and, and Diane Feinstein too. She's uh, yeah. she's heavily yeah. into this. Well, we have a clip of Diane with Diane Feinstein. Yeah. Now let's play a little bit of her right now to put it in context. Here's Diane Feinstein speaking on uh, that we've got to solve this problem. It's guns. We got to solve it. We got to solve this. All right, that was Diane Feinstein. Um, a, a bill is going to go through. Uh, it's the first thing they're going to do in a new Congress. Banning assault weapons. And, hey, here's the question I was going to ask yeah. before that piece. Do you think the the leftists who are uh, anti-gun, if if America said, let's take a vote on whether um, we should disband the Second Amendment, no personal gun ownership. Human beings, if you're non-military, non-police, non-state authorized, um, not no concealed carry, nothing like that, only authorities paid by the federal government can own guns, do you think they would say the world would be a better place? Was this before or after Texas secedes from the Union? <laughs> well, I mean, if... Yeah, good point. If, <laughs> it's... <laughs> yeah. It's a... Um, it's a philosophical question, but it establishes a way of thinking of these no, people making public policy. Exactly. Do you think they would say yes if there was no personal ownership of guns, like in like in Britain? You know, right. um, there's no personal ownership and the very low uh, kill rate with guns. Nobody has guns; <laughs> they kill people other ways. Um, do you think they'd say yes? That'd be a better, saner, safer world. Of course. Yeah, that's that. That is their ultimate goal: is to remove the Second Amendment. They they have no no desire whatsoever to see anybody. If they could gather and turn all. So why don't I mean? What's the problem with that? If if uh, if no one if no citizens owned guns, then theoretically. Well, no then citizen. only the illegal aliens would own guns, mm -hmm. and that would well, be bad get, trouble for all of us, right? We didn't right? get to that yet. Let's just assume magically we can make it so no citizens own guns. Okay. Or, or no no people living in America. No people living in America are allowed to own guns. We said the not. magic gun removal device, and we could, and we could suck them into the, right, right now the gun destructo machine. And right now there's, there's 89, 89 guns per every 100 Americans. So there's you know a zillion guns. But... If we could magically take everything away, mm -hmm. like um, uh, you, know, you know, like there were no guns in the you know twelfth century, tenth century, the Middle Ages, um, would it be a safer, cleaner society? Would it be a safe if we had no guns? No guns whatsoever. The, the problem is, it's never the the instrument itself. Look, you could make the same argument. Look at cars. 
There's more people killed by cars than there are guns. Right. So what do you do? Ban cars? Do we, I mean, you, you take the, the instrument away. It doesn't stop the... But the, the intent, intent of a car is to provide transportation. It's not to kill somebody. The intent of a gun is to kill somebody. So uh, this little nut job, what is it? Adam, I forget what his name. Adam. What, what's Adam I don't even want, Lanza. Want, I, don't, I don't even want to know his name. Well, Adam Lanza. Uh, it was, or was the other He's guy? He's made his name. Dr. Michael Wellner, a friend of ours. Um, yeah. Uh, I saw him on Fox talking yeah, about he, it. Um, a lot of the psychologists are saying now. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into some of this stuff. So anyway, but yeah, but the point being is, would Adam have jumped into a car and run it into the same school? I mean, uh, it, the point is he wanted to kill people. Yeah. It, you're just taking away the instrument of this to put, place with the instrument of that. Would he take, would he take in a, a, a dynamite? Okay, yeah. and then run it in there, or some type of yeah, gasoline. Like I said, yeah, you right, well, take away the gun doesn't take away the somebody's violent intentions. Yeah, but but the capability then you, you know why? Well, how how hard is it to buy a gallon of gasoline and light the school on fire? How hard is it to do you know to make a make a bomb? You know, you you, you get a fertilizer, fuel oil. Well, you know, let's not it, give the recipe. Well, no, like, people different. could at least it's look the, it that's up. That's the Tim, easy uh, Tim, uh, Tim, um, Mackel, not McElvaney. It was Tim. Well, it, and it goes with the same. Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh. And it goes with the same intent. <clears throat> you, you look at this way. Okay. Why do we not have, why do we not have a problem of Russia owning nuclear weapons? Because we know they're not going to launch them preemptively. Why do we not have a problem with France having nuclear weapons? Why do we not have I mean, we're taking it to the extremes, right? Yeah, 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 no, yeah. Let's take it to the extremes. Why do we have a problem with Iran having nuclear weapons? Why do we have a problem with with uh, the Ayatollahs having nuclear weapons? It is, I don't I don't think you should put, you know, weapons in the hands of criminals, convicted felons, or, or, or things like that, or mentally disturbed people. That's obvious. What about their constitutional right? They have no constitutional right when their intent and their, and their, their ability to be destructive is... Okay. On the other side, hold that the, thought because we're we're making headway on the fact that the Second Amendment exists, but it doesn't mean that there isn't regulation of ownership. That's right. Clearly, there's been regulation. Yes. Right. Um, and, and Connecticut having one of the most stringent regulations in the nation. And the mother followed. Uh, it looks like followed all the all Absolutely. the rules and laws, right. and she used them properly, and she used yeah. them in the way they should be used. And and her her <coughs> her rationale was. This kid was uh, seriously um, disturbed. The rationale was because he, he really didn't have a father, and she was trying to be mother and father and brother, and the brother wasn't around. She was taking him shooting and was very proud of the fact that he had developed a proficiency in a manly sport, what is perceived as a manly sport. And um, uh, But maybe Ann can weigh in. Why don't you bring Ann? Hi, Ann. Hi, how's it going? Hi, good. Thanks for calling today. Where are you calling from? Calling from Texas. Oh. From the country. Ah. Uh oh. We, we got a tech, you got a, we need to you got a six shooter on you, Ann. We need to hear we need to hear what you have to say. Ann's probably got a pink six six shooter on her. Yeah. yeah. Are you a school teacher I don't as well? Carry a pink six shooter. I carry the real thing. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> we got a live one on the on the line here. <laughs> Um, what do you What do you want to tell Look, us? If we're, gonna, if we're gonna ban guns, then let's go close down every single Planned Parenthood that there is, because this whole argument is absolutely absurd and insane. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. We all know guns don't kill people; people do. People have to take responsibility for their own weapons. This lady, I don't know what her whole story is. I don't know what her son's story is. But if he had any kind of mental condition and he was living in the house with her, it's her responsibility to take the appropriate precautions, such as keeping them locked in a gun safe or what have you. So it's her fault she was killed. So it's, so it's her fault that, that, he, that he shot her, is what you're saying. What I'm saying is gun owners can take a precautionary responsibility in exercising their gun rights by understanding their circumstances and their situations. If you have a mentally ill, mentally challenged person in your home, then who, you know, for instance, if, if say they aren't even allowed to drive because of these issues, then I would think it would be appropriate to take that personal action of making sure that your firearms are locked and safe. 
Um, I don't think that that means that she can't ever take him to the shooting range or anything like that. I don't have a problem with that, well, especially considering the circumstances and the you know lack of father, you know, uh, people fatherhood in his place in his presence or whatever. It, no, it it wasn't her fault that he did that. But I think it could have it could have been prevented if she had taken measures such as that. Well, we don't know she, she did. did. We don't know she actually did take we those measures. Yeah, we don't know what kinds of measures she, right. she well, took. Well, what we're hearing is this yeah. kid was, you know, genius on the, on the scale of intelligence too. Yeah. So right. you know, he probably could have gotten But let me ask you, Ann. You said if we're if we're going to ban guns and get rid of the Second Amendment, then we need to close all the Planned Parenthoods. Um, what do you mean yeah, by what that? Is that? Yeah. What's that all about? Okay. How, I mean, let's let, let's talk about a total pre-planned attack on innocent life, okay? These are planned, scheduled murders of innocent babies. Babies of innocent babies. They have done nothing to no one, okay? To me, that is much more of an atrocity. I'm not downplaying what happened in Newton, Col- Newtown, Colorado, or Connecticut. I'm not downplaying that whatsoever, but what I'm saying is, and it, it, this kind of goes along the lines of what Mark was saying just a few minutes ago, if you're going to ban guns because there are some people who use the free will that was given to them by God for evil, and you're going to punish the law-abiding citizens because of those who decide to carry out evil, I mean, the same argument goes for all the Planned Parenthood and the other abortion clinic. I mean, they're just as guilty, if not more so, for planning something like that out and allowing that to happen day by day. Our congressmen, legislators are just as guilty, and they have blood on their hands as well for allowing that to continue to happen. Yeah, that, I've heard that argument in the in the pro-life community. People would obviously object to the, the premise, well, these aren't human beings, these aren't you know babies, these aren't that. I think the science is showing that they are. Uh, so Look, I've, had, I've been pregnant eight times. We've had four miscarriages, okay? I have four living children. I've heard my baby's heartbeat as early as four weeks old. You can't tell me that that's not a human human being. You can't tell me that's not a living person. Uh, you have um, you have four kids. I have four kids. Now you you said four. earlier that you have guns. Was were you serious or were you joking? Of course I have guns. Uh, well, you're in Texas, I guess. Uh, does everybody in Texas have guns? Mostly. All right. Now uh, you got little kids. Absolutely. I have uh, from age five all the way up to she'll be eighteen tomorrow. And, and oh, congratulations! And, and what? Um, we don't know your last name. We don't know anything about you. What? Uh, what kind of guns do you do you own? Uh, we have long guns. We have rifles. We have uh, semi-automatics. We have handguns. Are you starting we your own PC, militia? We have, I mean, guns. we have airsoft guns. Well, I mean, take your pick. <laughs> are you starting a little army in Texas? or uh, Now, where are all these guns when your kids are running around the house playing, um, you know, uh, Etch-a-Sketch? Sure. Um, I typically am, am almost always armed. Um, so there's almost always I have something on my person. Uh, we have a shotgun that is above the fireplace. We have uh, various other arms that are locked up in our closet. But we always have access to something if, if need be. Uh, but right now, very... right now, the liberals listening to this are having conniptions going, oh, my God, get that lady arrested for child abuse. Uh, are Listen, the, are let, your... me, let, let, let me tell you something. My kids, my kids know the safety of, of weapons. It's not a taboo topic for them. It's not um, we allow them under controlled environments to touch them. They help us clean our weapons. They know various parts of the weapons. Um, they are not allowed to touch those weapons when, obviously, when we're not around, and they understand. In fact, uh, there was a, a round that was found uh, in the bathroom on the counter, and immediately my son brings it to me and says, Mom, I found this in the bathroom, you know, and, and that was that. Um, they know not to touch the actual weapons themselves. They are not, it's not a taboo thing. They are not, uh, you know, they don't sneak and ask, you know, or, or try to, you know, it, it's not anything like that. It's it's one of those situations where, you know, we teach them. Um, in fact, they all have their own uh, BB guns, and shortly we'll be getting, uh, we'll be starting them off on a twenty two rifle. Um, all right, well, a couple of fact, questions. The church that we came from, they actually even teach them 
how to shoot rifles. So, I mean, it's they, they're, the very first thing they learn is safety, and that started on the toy guns. You don't point a gun at anybody unless you're willing to take that person's wow. life. I guess there will be no MPAC convention at your church. <laughs> Oh, we'd love to have them. I would, I would love to have them. Hey, Bring Salam, them Salam, our, uh, Mariani, <laughs> and Mr. Hey Toot. We got a church in Texas for you. You know, bring your long guns. Yeah, why don't you do some interfaith <laughs> dialogue? <laughs> Dialogue with Anne and her pastor. Um, hey, you know what? You bring up a good point, though. Uh, i got to tell go you, this coffee is really church. good. I said, I'm you, sorry. You go, you go visit a cowboy church, and I guarantee you, they won't be holding any of this interfaith. <laughs> <laughs> interfaith this. And are, with. would you say you and, yeah, I'm assuming you have a husband. Would you and your husband be cowboys or, or police officers or military or anything like that? My husband was in special ops, and he is currently over uh, in the Middle East right now. Okay, so okay. so you have a professional person in your family that understands all this stuff, and, and he has helped guide and direct your family with this? Oh, absolutely. He has helped train me and uh, and still continues to train me anytime he's home with us. He'll wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning and, you know, uh, abruptly and, I'm an intruder. What do you do? What do you do? And, you know, I'm an intruder. You, know, you sure that's not <laughs> his way of? Uh, you hey. sure that's not his way of? Uh, hey, honey, back on, yeah, back on the six say, shooter. Here we go. <laughs> Strange foreplay, maybe. Who knows? Uh, yeah. No, but I mean, he also knows too that uh, you know there are times where during his military training they would be out in the field for days at a time and. He also understands, too, because of that training, he will always text or call me before he enters the home if I'm not expecting him because, you know, it, that is smart. he has trained me such right. that, you know, if somebody is entering my home after dark, it, they're probably going to hear a 12-gauge, um, you know, cocked and, and ready and loaded. Click, click. Ooh. I just got a breaking news uh, text here. Barack Hussein Obama now supports reinstating the ban on assault weapons. He just came out and... Uh, made a statement on that. And that raises the question, Ann, um, the, 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 the left, and, and there's even conservatives now that are rethinking their view of assault weapons. No one's saying we need to ban all guns. They're saying that assault weapons, and they're using them as um, uh, weapons of warfare. Well, what's the definition of an no. assault weapon? That's, yeah, that's... yeah, well, yeah. Explain to me. Yeah. yeah. Define what an assault I mean, I weapon thought, is uh, for me. Yeah, just... I thought all guns can, can were meant to assault um, people where with. Where it states assault weapon in the Second Amendment? I, I'm sorry, I haven't really read that in there before. Is that? <laughs> well, the argument is it doesn't say bazookas either, and it doesn't say rocket launchers, and it doesn't say all of that, but no citizen can own a bazooka or a uh, MPAD or a rocket launcher. So, you know, the, the America has made a decision that certain weapons are not for uh, citizen the citizenry, and uh, now the debate is oh, going to well, be wait over. wait a minute. Okay, so are we going to include um, bath salt crystals on there? Um, bath salt crystals? Yeah. Why? Why should we include bath salt crystals? Oh, well, you know, kids are using those to, as a drug, and then they end up, you know, have you not heard about the cannibalism stories from that crap? Yeah, it wasn't these too far from where we're seated, actually. It was uh, down here in Miami. These salt crystals, and it, and it makes them, it, it messes with their brain. It makes them go crazy, and they literally start eating people. It's insane. But, I mean, come on, really? Oh, okay, no, but, well, let's are, go are we going to ban, like Mark said, are we going to ban vehicles? Because people get drunk in their car. Hell, people just race in their car sober and kill people. Right. Let me, let me right. ask. Let are me we ask. Gonna, are we gonna outlaw anthrax? Or we gonna let me ask all three of you. Let me ask Ann on the phone. Them? Let me ask Cowgirl Ann on the phone. Let me ask CJ and Mark. Um, do you think that if uh, if Adam Lanza didn't bring the AR-15, the semi it was not an automatic weapon. Right. Automatic weapons mm -hmm. are already banned. You, right. you can't own an automatic weapon unless you have a federal license. And the federal license means you've been recognized as someone who can own these things, okay? You're, the difference between an automatic weapon and a semi-automatic, I mean, come on. I mean, there's not that much difference. Well, no, there's, a, there's actually a big difference. You hold your finger down, and you have to pull your finger. It's, it's five times as fast. But the, the argument right now is that um, he used an AR-15 semi-automatic with several clips. He had to reload all of that, and, and several clips were found there. He fired over 100 rounds. Um, 
do you think if he if he just took he had a sig and a, and a glock um and he could have used both hands with those mm-hmm. and they they fire extremely rapidly and right. he could have reloaded you can do that stuff very rapidly do you think if he just killed all those kids mm-hmm. with pistols mm-hmm. with semi-automatic pistols and not the ar-15 still 20 died because he, he would have been able to do that would have taken 30 seconds longer maybe 45 seconds longer mm-hmm. do you think uh there'd be outrage right now and if there would be what would the outrage be pointed at the outrage. let me ask you let me ask you this have you heard there have been at least three different stories in the last um three or four weeks where a armed citizen in public was able to stop a perpetrator such as Adam Lanza. Right. Yes. Did you hear any outcry over that? Did anybody complain that that citizen was armed? No, but but we'll, we'll take this a step at a time. Let's go to the situation where he just used two pistols and reloaded them very quickly, still caused the same amount of horrendous carnage. What would... Pelosi, Feinstein, Bloomberg, what would all of those guys, what would they be saying right now? Because there's an emotional gonna, shock that shocked America. Away. They're going to go after every weapon that is used. That's but right. what would their they're argument gonna... be? I mean, they, got, they seem to have an easy target with the AR-15, calling it a weapon of warfare. Right. What would the argument be? Look at the be? carnage. Look at how many people he was able to kill in such a short amount of time. This is obviously a horrendous weapon, yada, yada, yada. I mean, what did the, what did the Colorado shooter use? Just pistols, right? Or did he have a rifle? I, I believe he had a rifle also. Have a, rifle. a shotgun, I think he may have had. Well, sh- actually, believe it or not, if you take a... and here's the That argument, would have been worse. Here, here's the argument yeah. I was going to bring up. If he takes a 12-gauge, double-lot buck shotgun, it is the... You know, I own shotguns. I don't own those... You're whip- a gun owner? <laughs> I own shotguns, and I own... And because the thing about it is, you, you wusses out there, you come down at me with a pistol or, or a handgun or a rifle... I'll blow you right through a wall because it'll put a hole in the side of the wall. Another, we got another uh, no, cause cowboy. No, because right. it, it'll put a hole literally right. through a door. If you yeah. get double odd buck in there or, you know. Okay, but a 9 millimeter, doesn't a have nine millimeter to be too hollow good. point's going to go through the wall, too. I yeah, mean, but, 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 I'm, but, but I'm, I'm making but a point my, here. My, my point. Go ahead. Yeah, my yeah, point, yeah. Mark has a good point. My, handguns my point, is what they would do. My point being Mark has a good point. Is I just don't blow a hole through a wall. Here, I can take out three people easily that boom, are close together boom, with boom. one shot or two shots and boom 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 and those and you fire out and you you know put an extra large clip in inside one of the shotguns you can you know shoot off 10 mm. easily right and really do a, a lot more damage than, All right, well, especially let's, close, let's say because the preferred weapon the preferred weapon for uh seals inside an enclosed area in a tight area is the shot off shotgun cause of the effect of damage it does per you know, yeah. per body. So should right. we ban those? All right, well, that, then that's the question we're debating right now. If if he would have come in with a, uh, a legally purchased shotgun that you can buy anywhere on the face of the earth, certainly anywhere in America, um, and use that and just, you know, had five shots and, and reload it. You can reload five shots of buckshot in a class of little kids in a, in a corner. It would be devastating. Yeah, it would be, it would be more sure. devastating than, than this. What would the... The, uh, the the people see I, there's such a psychological and emotional impact that's devastating. We're flying flags at half mast. Everybody's in tears, legitimately so. That the analytical part of identifying the problem and then coming up with a solution is is going away. The problem is the people who are shouting about a solution are not looking to be analytical about it. They have a preconceived notion of taking away our rights, and they look for and pounce on any opportunity in which they can do so. So they don't... Well, well, what would they say? And, if... and they're reactionary. They're reactionary. They aren't preventative, and that's, that's one of the biggest problems. And if anybody is familiar with Mark Calvert, he, he wrote a wonderful piece just the other day yeah. about um, you know, the situation uh, in Israeli schools versus uh, the United States public schools. And it, it was an excellent piece, and, and he's absolutely right. Basically, one of the points he made was that every single time something like this happens in the state, it's always a reactionary response from the media, from 
law enforcement and from the federal government and the state government, always, always reactionary. Not once have we actually tried to sit down at the table and figure out realistic, preventative measures for situations like this. And it the well, that's my point, up. Anne, is I don't think these lawmakers are looking to have a reactionary uh, response to this. I don't think they're looking for a way truly to prevent things like this from happening. Um, right. I think, it's, I think their actions are not reactionary. I think they're proactive. These ideas that they have are in the can. The, this legislation that they introduce has already been written months or years before this tragedy Diane occurred, Diane and they're waiting that. for the first opportunity yeah. to pull it out and right. wave it and push it down our throats. All right, here's what we're so, going to do. Here's what we have to do. I want to uh, I want to continue with the question: If it was just a shotgun that caused the same amount of damage, with no extended clips, none of that, <clears throat> he just he just did it with a shotgun. He had two shotguns. You've seen pictures of uh, the amount of weapons an individual could carry with just a jacket. You can put guns down your legs. You can put guns all over the place. You can bear arms all over you your body. You can bear your arms. So if it was just that, <laughs> just a regular shotgun that every hunter has, um, and, and, he, and it caused this, this carnage, what would the left be saying? Because that's how we have to approach this thing, too. Right. If, you, if you figure out what an assault weapon is, which it was figured out in the Clinton years— came up with a definition, and then the manufacturers changed it a little bit, and we're still able to sell right. more of them. Um, that's not going to be the solution. But we got to take a uh, – we got to go to our Sharia segment as we close out. So if you want to hang over for the next hour, Cal – Yeah, keep your guns uh, oiled or whatever you do with guns. Annie, keep your gun. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Annie Oakley, hey, hey, there we go. That's where it all started. My grandpa used to, ah. rock, used to bounce me on his knee and say, Annie, get your gun. There That's you go. Okay, well, we're going right, to do I'll talk to you later. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Quick, uh, we've got about two or three minutes for my Sharia, Mark. What do you got for us? Ma, 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 ma. <laughs> it's not on my screen. Is it on it takes a minute for me. Oh, okay. My Sharia. My Sharia. Never gonna stop or give it up. Killing infidels always got a plan. Well, this is important because the gun issue is going to relate to what we're doing here with the jihadis. Updates from our favorite book, Reliance of the Traveler, a codified Islamic law notarized and signed by the International Institute of Islamic Thought in North America and also by the Feet Council, Council of Council. North America and Al Hazar University, certified, signed, and stamped. And we have things that are banned in Sharia law selling grapes, raisins, or, or similar <laughs> to someone who will make wine out of them, or wood or the like to someone who will make musical instruments, weapons to non-Muslims who will use them against us, wine to someone who will drink it, as opposed to selling it a vinegar maker, for example, or hemp or similar to someone who wishes to use it as a drug. Those are just a few And what's the wood things. thing all about? You can't These sell are wood. These a few of my huh? favorite things. You can't sell wood to people? You can't sell wood you to, can't people. Sell How to, make to people. How the hell can you be a Muslim and not sell wood? Because you make an instrument out of it, which will corrupt the youth, which will cause them to have sex, which will cause them to lose women to lose their virginity, which means you'll have to kill your daughter eventually. That's the whole rationale behind it in a nutshell. Music pervert is music is Satan's. So in words. Islam, no music is allowed. No, no, no. It's in fact strictly forbidden uh, in. Uh, music. I've seen like Muslim... I've seen Hamas uh, yeah, videos dancing for kids, and... uh, like with uh, the Hamas Mickey Mouse that the, has the, music the, the, there that is teaches them to kill music. Jews. Like Western music is music to kill Jews by. <laughs> <laughs> music to kill Jews by. Okay. <laughs> no, but, the, but that's one of the things they must control is the is the 
cultural aspect of what tempts women to to okay well no music uh. for muslims uh be, 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 Join atheism or something where you can do whatever, you know. Join the Unitarians. Um, join the Unitarians. Hey, we love everything. In any event, that. we'll be back in a little bit. We'll continue on the Second Amendment. Tuning in to Trento Vision, where bad ideas get pulverized and the truth will set you free. Tom Trento can be reached at 561-319-5533 or tom at trentovision.tv. And tune in again weekdays from 3 to 6 p.m. on AM 1470 WNN.